So we've got Resident Evil, the final chapter here. To say your character's gone through a lot is a huge understatement. Uh, can you talk about the beginning of this film and what is her next move given the sort of uh, apocalyptic ending of the last one? Well, I mean, definitely this movie starts off uh, with, you know, a lot of chaos. Mm -hmm. um, or at least, you know, you get the feeling that there's been this huge war that's destroyed everything. And Alice, you know, first moment she's on screen, she's she's exhausted. You know? <laughs> so she starts the movie already at the end of her tether. And then, you know, she's got to go back to Raccoon City and save the world in 24 hours. So it's one of those, uh, you know, adventures where you're on the clock. So mm -hmm. it's really exciting in that sense. And uh, through it, you, you meet all of these well-loved characters and new people that we haven't met before and some crazy monsters and it just keeps going and going it's amazing you know the end of the last movie uh you know she's she's kind of talking to wesker about what's happening here of course she can't trust him she can't trust umbrella but is it a you know well we've got to work together situation or is it always i, I cannot possibly work alongside these people well, that's one of the questions that's answered in the movie is uh, what Alice and Wesker's relationship ends up being. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's definitely not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, you're bringing Claire back in this one. Uh, you know, there was uh, she was one of a few people that, you know, were sort of taken away a couple movies ago. Can you talk about that reunion and how the two of them have both changed at this point? What is their dynamic like? You know, I, uh, I think Claire has always been such a, a loved character within the games. And um, it's so nice to have Ali back playing her. She, she did such a great job in number three. And uh, we loved working with her so much. And, um, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really fun to, to kind of have a franchise where you can bring people back and, and they might disappear for a film but come back in another one. Um, and, you know, now these two women have gone through so much together and have been separated and meet each other again. And it's, it's perfect because you know they have each other's back and you know that they support each other and they really love each other. And there's a there's a real strength to that union coming back together. So I think it's going to be exciting for an audience. Uh, these movies certainly give you plenty of big action sequences. The teaser trailer already showed us some of it, but can you talk about anything in this movie that you're really excited for audiences to get to see? You know, it's it's really hard to say because there's so much great action and the movie's terrifying. There's so many great scares and amazing monsters and, you know, just things that we've never seen in the franchise before. You know, the thing that I'm most excited by is also, you know, my daughter playing the Red Queen. Yeah. She's uh, an eye-opener in this movie, and that storyline is so intense and so exciting. And you really get uh, an understanding of Alice and where she comes from and who she is. So it's fun. The Red Queen is such an interesting character in these movies and has been this sort of ominous presence. Was that very interesting and fun for you and your daughter to play this very different dynamic than your day-to-day? Well, I was just so proud of her because, you know, she was so professional on set and learned all this dialogue and, you know, she loves acting. She's been act you know, asking me since she was five that she wanted to audition. She wanted to be an actress and I keep going, ah, slow down and, and giving her all these excuses. Oh, you have to do this, learn to read and go to acting class. And she's just done one thing after the next. And finally, you know, she was seven and a half and... It's like, I did, I learned to read. I read like a sixth grader now and I did my acting classes for a whole year. And so I found myself going, oh my gosh, she's so one track minded. I gotta like give her this opportunity. She wants to play the part. But um, it was it was amazing to be on set with uh, with my daughter. And also, you know, there's a, there's a great sequence where you see Alice, um, where you see Alice as an old person mm -hmm and you see the Red Queen, and you see Alice, who, sh you know, me. So you have like this full circle and all on the same screen. It's exciting. Uh, this is the sixth movie in a franchise that began in 2002. Uh, there's very few movies that get that sort of longevity with a franchise. What do you think it is that's been the secret to the success of Resident Evil? Um, well, you know, I guess it's been organic. I feel like a lot of franchises get sort of stuck in the rut of, oh my God, we need to come out on this date every year. We just need to get another one, get another one. And you lose the passion for it. It just becomes like, 
go back to the grind and like turn it out whether you're inspired or not. And I think it's sad because you, you've you seen like some amazing franchises that, you know, just got worse and worse because they were stuck in that kind of rut. So I, I think part of the, the, the magic of Resident Evil is that we never allowed ourselves to like be told, oh, we need another one. Well, you're gonna have to wait because we need a break. <laughs> you know, like especially Paul who spends a year, more than a year, making each film you know it, you got to decompress you got to refuel you know get re-inspired and um so you know, we put these out every two three years mm -hmm. you know i think this has been the longest that we haven't put one out and part of that was me being pregnant and so we had to stop production and um you know have to have to have a baby <laughs> <laughs> so uh, definitely, I think that is a big reason in in my head. I just think there's a, there's there's a passion that we have for these movies that that we didn't let you know people tell us what to do with them. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, it's it's build as the final chapter. How much you know of a full wrap up does it feel like at the end? And you know, is the door open for more? Or do you think that you know this is sort of putting a period on the end of the sentence? I think I think it's both. I mean. Part of this movie is we always had an open-ended ending, um, so that's kind of stylistically been the choice. A, not because we thought we were going to make another one, but that's just how Paul liked to do it. Um, so, but I think this one does a good job of you know bringing it full circle, but then you know Alice is kind of going on to her next adventure, and you know she's not just going to sit around like you know, having barbecues after this with like the survivors. Okay. I mean, she's not that person, you know, she's a, she has to find her friends. She's got a lot of things that um, are left undone still. So, um, but at the same time, we bring her story to an end too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's it's kind of the best of both worlds, you know, she, she comes to terms with who she is and she moves on with her life. Well, thank you so much. Looking forward thank to the movie. You.